Hello everyone, it's John back with a non-spoiler review of Ip Man 4, starring Donnie Yen, which was released around Christmas Day of 2019. I have to say that uh, I am a huge fan of the Ip Man films, and I think Donnie Yen's portrayal uh, of the Grandmaster... Um, is is pretty much close to what people would expect it, the real Ip Man to have been uh, like. The, the problem with uh, any film series that reaches its fourth instalment, um, or really any instalment on the first sequel, is that you're going to be either retreading old storylines or changing a few um, scenarios here and there, a few situations where where the story is taking place um and it and it doesn't really go anywhere anywhere new or, or interesting and i think possibly the biggest challenge the it man series faced um was growing the story a little bit beyond it man and trying to incorporate his most famous student Bruce Lee into the story. They did attempt it uh, in Ip Man 2 and Ip Man 3 to some extent, but I, I don't think they did it with any success um, in respect of that particular story arc until Ip Man 4. The actor playing uh, Bruce Lee in this film um, does not really try to copy Bruce Lee in his entirety, and I think that's a wise move, simply because when you look at the real Bruce Lee on, on screen, you know it's him, and when you look at anyone else who's playing him, you know it's not him. And for an actor, their job is to convince us that what they're doing is an accurate portrayal, and hopefully not a parody. I watched a version of Bruce Lee being portrayed in the Quentin Tarantino movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and I have to say whilst I was initially encouraged by the trailer I was hugely let down by what I saw in the movie and I um, support and understand Shannon Lee's um, um, vehement Dis, uh, strong opinions on uh, the portrayal of her father. I don't think it was good. I don't think it was a, a good homage to Bruce Lee. And, and Quentin Tarantino is supposed to be a big fan of Kung Fu and Kung Fu movies. And anyone who's seen Kill Bill would have enjoyed that. But uh, this version didn't work. The only other time that I can see it have working on on the big screen was in Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, which was star starring Jason Scott Lee, and was released a long time ago now in 1993. But I do remember it, which will give you an idea of how old I am. But Ip Man Four treats the character, the real life character of Bruce Lee, with. Um, you know, great humility, respect, but also the coolness that he, he became uh, known for. And whilst the actor doesn't have to necessarily pull off the mannerisms or, or how he acted, his fighting skills not in doubt, and um, I, I really enjoyed that, that element of, of his story. Um, about ten minutes into the film, I was a little bit concerned that maybe, just maybe, it was going to be weak, the weakest of the four, and... Uh, I actually still think Ip Man 2 is the weakest of the four films, although there are some very um, great elements in that, that film. Overall, I think it's the weakest of the series. So when I went in to watch Ip Man 4, it was with not exactly low expectations, but realistic ones. I thought that Donnie Yen's performance would be just as good, and uh, if not better, and uh, I certainly wasn't disappointed there. Um... Scott Atkins, who plays the main um, antagonist, is actually from uh, not far away. He was born not far away from an area that I live, um, Sutton Coldfield in, in the West Midlands uh, here in England. And he uh, plays his role uh, very well. Um, the skills that he employs in the film uh, are really excellent. And this is where I think Ip Man 4 stands possibly 
as the best of the four in terms of the martial arts skills and the realism being employed to them. There is some really nasty Wing Chun on, on display here. This, this film doesn't hold back um, from showing you the brutality of the system. And uh, in, on, a, on certain levels you can respect that as, a, as a, an exponent of Wing Chun or indeed as, as of martial arts in themselves. So to, to kind of give you a flavour to the story and how it's different to the first three films, it's actually set in America for um, um, large parts of it and it follows um, uh, Ip Man who actually uh, goes to uh, America to meet with his student who's getting a little bit of heat uh, from other teachers, particularly the Chinese community who don't think that Bruce Lee should be teaching um, the round-eyed Guaylo, the, the foreigners, uh, in effect. And Bruce and Ip are of the same mind that, you know, it's good to broaden out martial arts teaching to uh, others. But remember that this film is set in 1964 um, where you know, racism is still quite a, um, a big thing and unfortunately it's still a thing in the 21st century, unfortunately, we do still walk into it. And the racism angle is just about uh, not overplayed in this film and I think, again, that's a wise decision by the director and the, the writers. Um, I think it was realistic in Ip Man 1 because the Japanese invaded China and China never invaded uh, anybody. Um, uh, in Ip Man 2 the, the British are made to be look such bad guys that it almost descends into parody but I think if you enjoy the film uh, on its merits and as a good addendum to uh, Ip Man 1 it's a, it's a reasonably enjoyable film. Uh, where 3 was really good was where it actually um, played Wing Chun against Wing Chun and um, you had two actors with uh, really good martial arts skills um, and um, although there was uh, competing plot lines in it, Man 3, I think it holds together um, quite well, particularly in the end. But Ip Man 4 seems to have the best storyline since since the first one, the most most coherent storyline. Um, there is less going on here than in Ip Man 3, and yet that doesn't mean nothing is happening. It's it's very much an action oriented film, which you'll have seen from the trailers, but it it really does work on a storyline level, um, on an acting level. Um, and on an aesthetic level, because the film looks gorgeous. I mean, it's, I believe it was still choreographed by the same action director, uh, Yun Wen Ping, from Ip Man 3 and, and various other Hong Kong Kung Fu movies. But it, it really does look marvellous. And whilst I think Ip Man 3 probably looked slightly better, it went for a more stylistic approach in, in some of the fights. Whereas this one, although there's a lot of style, you, you could believe the moves could be done and, and they are pretty realistic and you know it's a little bit graphic at times and I, and I think that's a, a good thing. It, it doesn't go over the top on the gore but it does show how the, the various moves could be ap applied and um, you know the, the, the different um, support actors they've got there who are doing martial arts. You have a, um, a really good fight with, with Bruce Lee and a karate guy in an alleyway. Uh, which features nunchucks, which was great to see. You have um, a really good karate uh, fighter facing off against different kung fu masters, and um, that was one of my favourite um, parts of the film. And you know that, as with most kung fu movies, it's building up to a big final fight, and uh, it won't be any spoiler to to say that this does feature Donnie Yen versus Scott Atkins, and you want something special, knowing that this is going to be the the last film because the full title of this film is Ip Man for the finale, so uh, there isn't going to be uh, another one. I actually didn't watch the first three movies on the lead up to this uh, 
um, cinema watching of Ip Man 4. In fact, it's the only Ip Man film I've seen in the cinema, so I was very lucky to catch it. And when um, that had finished, I, I did actually watch Ip Man 1, 2 and 3 about um, 10 days or so later over differing nights when I had time. And I really enjoyed them, I, and particularly Ip Man 3, which I think I'd been a bit hard on originally. I think I'd called it a bit of a, a bloated mess, but actually um, it does come together on the rewatch. But I think it's important that a film ticks most if not all of the right boxes when you watch it the first time and then when you watch it again you you see even deeper meaning to it and layers and that might seem a ridiculous statement to make given that kung fu movies aren't really known for their depth but Donnie Yen and the, the story writing team for the Ip Man films did actually add a layer of complexity uh, and depth to the man that I believe uh, had the great grandmaster um, lived to see these films, I think he would have agreed with a, a lot of it. We're, we've got to take some of the things that happen with a, with a pinch of salt because um, Ip Man 1 took some liberties with, um, you know, the historical accuracy of the character. Um, and by Ip Man 4, th there are going to be different things happening. And, and Ip Man himself never went to the, the US, but he would have been happy, I'm sure, to know that Bruce was doing so well. Um, there are... Um, you know reasons why it wouldn't have wouldn't have travelled to uh, America uh, during that time, but I I think really if you're going to watch a great kung fu series, um, all four films have have been made with a lot of love I think and a lot of care and a lot of respect to the character, and there are few film series I can't really think of any apart from it man that actually devoted so much uh, love and respect to the art of Wing Chun Kung Fu. Um, there are other films that featured it, but not really a series that, that comes to mind. There was the Wing Chun film starring Donnie Yen, actually, and Michelle Yeoh from 1993, I believe. And it was an okay film um, that had some Wing Chun in it, but it was more of a comedy, um, whereas Ip Man does take itself a bit more seriously. Uh, when it does put humour in, I think it hits the mark. I think it's it, across all four films. Um, and I think it's a very strong um, Kung Fu series that no real martial arts fan could could be without. You, you would have to watch Ip Man uh, and certainly um, some of the others. I think on the whole my order would be um, first place Ip Man 1. Second place, even though I've rewatched it recently, uh, I'm going to, you know, re you know, reserve my judgment on, on part three. But I would just give part four second place for now. It, we'll have to see how it goes when I watch it again or watch it again on DVD later. Third place just behind part four is Is It Man 3. And trailing away a little bit in fourth is Ip Man 2. Um, but some of you do like Ip Man 2 uh, as the best and see it on a par with the first one or even better. Um, I, I actually don't, but um, I, th I think everyone's got a, a view on that. Um, I think I would have liked to have seen some elements of the latter forms in Ip Man 4. We, we, we're given some exposure to it with Ip Man 1 with the, the Tom Q form and some elements of Sulem Tao and so on. That's very pleasing to see. Um, there is a very uh, pleasing demo of the 116 dummy form in, in the film in Ip Man 4. Um, and it's like a, having a good wine, you know, you, you're sitting there thinking, oh, this is quality, this is good, this is so such a joy to see. Um, so, you know, I congratulate the, the film writers and producers, but most of all, I congratulate Donnie Yen, whose Kung Fu is not, not in question, his Kung Fu is wonderful, but... Um, Wing Chun was a, a bit newer to him and I think uh, to demonstrate it with the authority that he does you completely believe he is it man the Grandmaster of, of Wing Chun and um, 
I thoroughly enjoyed the film. Um, if you still can, do do go and see it in theatres and, and cinemas. But but if not, you know, get it on DVD or stream it on Netflix or whatever, and get and hopefully you've got the biggest screen at home that you have and uh, enjoy this film for for what it is a wonderful uh, kung fu uh, epic that is is brought to a, a fantastic conclusion um an emotional one too i think all the films were emotional uh, in some ways but um this wraps things up very nicely um that's my non-spoiler review i've tried to cover it uh as best i can without giving away any spoilers so go see it if you've got things to do tonight cancel them if you can this film is is wonderful and if i ever did a top 10 or top 20 of kung fu movies i'm pretty certain Ip man one would be uh, very high on the list but i don't think Ip man four would be that far behind and that's the greatest recommendation and honor i can give it okay thanks for listening and i hope to be back with another podcast uh, or movie review soon